Hello. Welcome to another video from Our God Will Provide. My name is Paul Haynes. We believe that we are now living in the time of the end. We believe that God has not left us in darkness as to the events that are about to happen. Through God's Word and the study of the books of Daniel and Revelation, we will lead you through some sobering studies which will enlighten, enable, and equip you for events soon to pass. Please share these timely messages with those whom you love. Don't forget to subscribe to get the latest video. If you have any questions or comments, then please send us an email. The title of our topic today is Time of the End, Part 3. We have been reading the vision of Daniel in the 11th chapter of his book. The kingdoms of Medo-Persia, Greece, Pagan Rome, and Papal Rome have come and gone in this vision from God. In the last blog, we were shown that the Sixth Kingdom, the United States of America, will become a servant of religion. Even though she has been known as a nation of religious freedom, she will be known as the enforcer of religious doctrine of the Antichrist. In order to understand Daniel 11, we have been following the order of the seven kingdoms mentioned in Daniel 7 and Revelation 12 and 13. We have a blog on it that's called Higher Math 5 plus 4 equals 7. They are listed in the graph below. Let's take a look at that graph. It shows that the seven kingdoms of Daniel 7 and Revelation 12 and 13 are listed here. We can see the seven. We know from the past that from Daniel 7 we got five of them, and they're listed here. I'm not going to go through the symbolism, but it was the lion, the bear, the uh, leopard, the dreadful beast, and then the little horn. From Revelation 12 and Revelation 13, we were able to get four kingdoms. Those were the red dragon, the composite beast, the lamb-like beast, and then the last beast, or the seventh beast. When we took these five plus four, what we did is we added the two in, in the center, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So you understand what we did. The historical significance of the seven kingdoms are delineated in Revelation 17.10. So let's turn to that. It says that five are fallen. One is, and one has not yet come. So what I'd like to do is just to go through the first five. Number one, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Pagan Rome, and Papal Rome. Then the sixth one. It says that it's the United States. It says the one is. And then we have the seventh, which is the image to the beast. We have all seven kingdoms that we've derived from Daniel 7, Revelation, and Revelation 12 and 13. We know that the five are fallen are the ones we just mentioned, one through five. The one is would be the United States, and the other not yet come would be the image to the beast. The first five kingdoms have already passed into history. When you read that one is, and you realize that the prophecy is talking about the United States of America, that should take your breath away. God is talking to you and telling you that the prophecy you are about to be part of is occurring now. God is not telling you that it happened in the time of the cross or that it's related to something a thousand years from now. It is related to the present time, the time in which you are now living. What is it that is about to happen to you and to the United States of America? Then. God tells us that in the very next few years, we will be looking at the seventh and last kingdom of the world. It shows us here, the one is, but one not yet come. It's the image to the beast. In blog number 20, we studied the actions of the sixth kingdom, and we were determined that, okay, now we've got that figured out, the United States, this is going to happen. We're ready to examine the seventh kingdom. But God takes us down a different path, and we must follow the path that God has given us. The next few verses tell us about the people that do know their God. Let's pick that up in verse 32. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits 
and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Who are these people? In Acts, they were called Christians. And here in Daniel 11.32, God calls them the people that do know their God. In this verse, we are told that they will be strong. Their actions will reveal the strength of their character and courage when they are asked to preach the gospel of God and His prophecies during the time of the end. How will they be received at the time of the end? God tells us. It says, Yea, they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil, many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. God tells us that they will undergo severe persecution, because their message will be for the time of the end. How does Satan fight? The truth of God is attacked. The people that give the truth of God will be attacked also with sword, flame, and jail time. When God helps his faithful followers, he tells them that others will try to deceive them. And some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them, to purge, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. There are those words again. This time of the end will change these people that do know their God. He tells them that his special people shall be refined, purified, and whitened like the precious metals of silver and gold. All these events will occur until the time of the end. This is what will happen to the people of God in the last Moed, the time of the end. John told us about this special time. We need to turn to Revelation 11 for that. And it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that would worship therein. Verse 1 tells us that John is asked to measure the temple of God, the altar of incense, and those that worship there. By measuring these sacred objects and his people, God is asking John to understand the saving doctrines of his church. That's his temple. The work of his disciples in interceding for those that are lost. That's the altar of incense, isn't it? And finally, to realize that his people are not alone. There are others working with him. Just like Elijah wasn't alone. There's 5,000 more. Let's go to the next verse. But the cord, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto whom? You remember that. We did that. The Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Those that don't believe in God. They may say they do, but they do not believe in the living God. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. What holy city would that be? Would it be the same one that Jesus died in? For how many months? We're called forty-two months. Verse 2 tells us that God is asking John to ignore the outer court of the sanctuary. This has been given to the Gentiles. Do you remember what I told you last time? Talking about the sanctuary service, this is the main sanctuary, and this is the curtain that goes all the way around the sanctuary, and what is this called? The outer court. Do you remember that it has the altar of um, sacrifice and the um, altar of water, or the brazen altar? That's the part that's been given to whom? The Gentiles. The outer court has been given to the Gentiles. The people that don't believe in God? Previously, the outer court was part of the sanctuary for the Jews. We just talked about that. And contained the altar of sacrifice and the laver of water. We've just mentioned that. In this vision, John must understand that this outer court, this area here, which is um, outside of the main sanctuary, has lost its spiritual significance and has been given to non-religious individuals, otherwise known as Gentiles. Then we're told why. God tells us that the city of Jerusalem, where the temple of God stood, will be controlled by the Gentiles for 42 months. Is that a little hard to believe right now? Is it possible that this formidable nation will soon not be under the control of Jews, but Gentiles? 
Let's go to the next verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. You can get really confused on this verse. People will tell you that the two witnesses are the, are the two olive trees. Really? That doesn't make sense. That's the gift that they're given. We read in these two verses that the two witnesses, the prophets of God, will be given two olive trees or the latter rain that they might proclaim the gospel of God and prophesy of the time of the end for 1,260 days. Let's go to the next verse. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of, the mouth, out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man kill, any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. The spiritual power that they will receive, these two witnesses, will enable these special people of God to preach with fire. They will stop rain like Elijah. They will smite the earth with plagues like Moses. They will stand and preach for God for 1260 days. Next verse. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. When God's allotted time runs out for these two witnesses, they will be killed by Satan himself. Then we are told that all of this will happen in the city where our Lord was crucified. That's Jerusalem, isn't it? Next verse. And they of the people in kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Will the earth mourn the deaths of these two worthies and turn to God? It doesn't say that. The two witnesses that volunteer to carry God's last warning to the earth will be treated like Jesus was. Next verse. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they, shall ascend, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Wait a second. I... I thought they were just killed by the devil. Well, who's calling them back to life? You will hear the voice of Jesus if you fall at this time. We read that the two witnesses will be resurrected. They will hear the call of God from heaven, and they will be born to heaven in a cloud like Jesus. This vision of Revelation 11 of his two witnesses will occur at the time of the end. It is an exact duplicate of the actions and results of the people that do know their God in Daniel 11. These people act like Jesus and try to warn the earth, but God shows us his plan. He will call them up if they die, and they will stand on the cloud that takes them to heaven. On the way there, his people will sing praises to him because we will be saved amply, fully, and entirely. In Daniel 11, you're given an idea that they will be refined and, and purified. We understand that. We read that. In Revelation 11, we found something a little bit different. We're going to give it. We're going to uh, act like Moses and uh, turn the, the river into blood. We're going to act like Elijah and we're going to stop the rain. Uh, we're going to act like Moses again when we throw the, uh, the plagues upon the earth. We must understand that our passage through this time of the end is necessary so that we can stand next to God, tried, purified, and made white, ready for the courts of heaven. Praise God for his love for us. Join us for the next blog when we will talk about the seventh and last kingdom.
We hope that you've been blessed by this presentation. God is good. He has given us Daniel revelation that we might be informed and protected during the time of the end. Please click our subscribe symbol to receive the next video. It's in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.